We welcome you to TV 44's Faith and Friends. If you're watching at the start of the week, Happy New Year to come. If you're watching this on Wednesday, <laughs> Happy New Year! If it's the Thursday the 2nd, Happy New Year. And then Friday, <laughs> resolution's broken. That's how the week goes, right? That's hor that's a that's horrible way to celebrate the new year. I mean you've like Happy new year! In, in just in just ten seconds of time, you you've done the lead up, the excitement, and pff, the whole year's over. That is how the week goes. <laughs> well, we have a jam-packed show for you here on Faith and Friends today, so we're gonna get right into it. Enough of Andy's New Year's antics coming up today. Why are you here on earth? Everyone is here to make a difference, but what is your specific calling? Well, we have several stories of local individuals committing their talents to God to make a difference for Him in some really incredible ways. But first, let's jump right into our verse of the day, which is not just a verse. It happens to be an entire chapter, Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is God. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Isn't that a great way to start the new year? In God's presence, in the courts, at the party. That was the original New Year's party in the Old Testament with God in the temple and just praising him. And someday we will be amongst his courts again, in his very presence, and every day will feel like New Year's Day, a celebration because we're before our God. Well, the Bible tells us to make a joyful noise. One way to make a difference is through music. Mm -hmm. If you received our latest newsletter, then you may have seen a story about a local recording artist who wrote a song to specifically encourage TV44. That recording artist is Hannah Beck. I have her CD and EP. It's a good one. Turns out the song she wrote for us that day, Out of the Way, is being used by God to encourage people all across the country. I know my wife's ministry, Kids at Heart, they love it there. Mark is with Hannah to talk about the song Out of the Way and her music ministry. Well, thank you, Andy. We are joined now by Hannah Beck, a local musician that uh, you've already put out a couple of different CDs. Tell us about yes. your music ministry. Well, my goal is to reach people in need. And I guess leaving it at just that is pretty general. But my desire is to find people where they are, whether it's emotionally struggling or um, maybe struggling with a situation in life and provide them music that will uplift them and encourage them and give them a way to worship even when they don't feel like it. Now you're still a teenager. How mm -hmm. long have you been writing music? You <laughs> write your music and your lyrics, correct? I do. I wrote my first full song when I was 11. And ever since then, it's just kind of grown. My, the topics that I will write about, different, the depth of the worship. Uh, slowly over the years, I've been blessed with people who would minister and mentor all at the same time to me and kind of help me along the way. Now, you're a student, you're also a musician, you also work here at TV44 in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this latest song of yours, Out of the Way, which was inspired by your work here at Channel 44. It was. Um, I wrote it back in the time when I really wasn't here very much, which I find remarkable because I was just a little bit around the people and around the environment. And when I wrote Out of the Way, it was kind of, it hit me that discouragement is easy to set in, especially in a ministry, because it's easy to see the funding doesn't show up. It's easy to see the volunteers just aren't there. Maybe um, programming isn't working out quite right. There's just all sorts of different reasons that people can become discouraged. And after I wrote Out of the Way, it hit me that it's not just here at TV44 in Lima, Ohio, that people need encouraged, but it's all over the place. It's people of all age categories in all different walks of life. They struggle with things and hopefully out of the way will be an encouragement to them. Now, when you write, do you write the words first or the music <laughs> first, or do they just kind of go hand in hand together? They do go hand in hand. Occasionally, I'll get just a inspiration for music or just the inspiration for lyrics, but generally, it comes all at once. Let me ask you this. Do you prefer studio work or performing live? Because you've done quite a bit of live performances around the area. I have. Um, you know, there's specific aspects to both that I enjoy. I enjoy being able to perform live because that gives me an opportunity to actually interact with people and reach out to them in person. 
Whereas with studio work though, it's, it helps me grow, I think, more in that setting because I can work on different aspects of my songwriting, work on different aspects of the recording. So both are really important. You've got a couple of CDs out. How can folks buy those? How can folks follow your career? Well, it's easy to follow me if you have Facebook. You can just type in Hannah Beck Music, and that is one way that I try to keep people updated. Twitter is another avenue. I'm not quite as good on Twitter, but I still try to get new events and new things out there. For people who want to read inspirational blog posts that I've written, um, watch videos, listen to music, and see where I'm going to be singing next, my website's a great place to go, and that's hannahbeckmusic.com. All right, thank you very much, Hannah. Now, thank faithful you. viewers of TV44 probably have already heard out of the way. If you haven't, though, here's a chance to listen to the song from this past summer down in Wayne Stock in St. Mary's. You're tired. You're you are running through what feels like a big storm some days you don't feel like getting out of bed but the sun is shining calling you instead and every day you wake up Discouraged, 
But don't lose hope, that's the enemy trying to get you, get you out of the way. But today's not his day, and tomorrow doesn't look good either. Wasn't that a great song, Out of the Way? It's just one of the songs that appeared as part of our summer concert series on TV44. Not only was that an integral part of our programming this past summer, but also part of our special New Year's Eve programming here on TV44. Nothing like ringing in the new year with incredible music that glorifies God. Well, there's another woman in the community we want to highlight for how she's making a difference. Dorothy Lavelle Jones is so passionate about doing so, she named her nonprofit, I'm Making a Difference. Jennifer talks with Dorothy, and if you know any children between the ages of kindergarten and 12th grade, listen up, there's an event coming up that could involve them. I'm with Dorothy Lavelle Jones, who is the brain behind I'm Making a Difference, an organization that's been around for almost half a decade, well, probably more than half a decade, and God is doing some great things with it. Tell us about I'm Going Mad, or whatever you like to call it. I am going mad. It's an awesome, awesome, you remember that, actually. When we first started, we were, I am making a difference, get involved to make a difference. So when you just mentioned the letters and all of that, it's I'm mad, get mad, because we want people to get involved to make a difference. Tell me about the program. What does it do for kids in the community? Well, what, it, what we were hoping to establish is to give our young people, um, you know, they always say that we need to do something about the kids in Lima. Somebody got to do something about the kids. Well, we listened, and we're doing that. We are making a difference in the lives of our young people, and we do that through the Dr. Martin the King oratorical contest and so that is that is our, our dream and Dr. King had his dream and as as a child four years old coming up my mother told me to uh, never let his dream die the day that we saw him um, being on the television she sat us around the table and said don't let his dream die and I was four years old I didn't know what it meant but I was certainly gonna not let his dream die and here 40 some years Years later, I get to make a difference and use Dr. Martin Luther King's platform of a brotherhood of of uh, neighbors. So I, you know, wanted to do that, make a difference in that kind of way. You recently had a great concert, lots of incredible talent. What was the purpose behind that event? Well, we want to raise savings bonds. We need, we did a fundraiser so we can raise savings bonds for our young people. So that's basically what the that fundraiser was for, uh, the concert. It was our dream. God gave me the dream, and he showed me the people to talk to, the venue we would have it at, and later, here it is. And, and one of the one awesome thing about that is there's more to come. There's more to come. If we can dream uh, on a smaller stage, can you imagine what God can do on a larger one? So I just want to be used by him and so I get to use, get to be used by him in this capacity. That's wonderful. Now the Martin Luther King Jr. Speech Contest is coming up January 25th. Are kids still eligible to get involved and if so, what do they need to do? Yes, they just need to contact me. I am making a difference. Uh, or con can they contact the radio or your TV station? Awesome. And then we're on um, web on the web. I am making a difference. Uh, dot org. www. I am making a difference. Inc. Dot org. Or come to my Facebook page under the same name. Just search us on Facebook. You get all the information. Thank you, Jennifer. Turning now to uh, an important issue. January is National Slavery and Trafficking Awareness Month. Statistics sadly show that Ohio ranks very high as a place for trafficking. Many people wouldn't think that we here in the Midwest would be so susceptible, but we are. Coming up in just a few weeks, New Life Church International is hosting a special event that will not only bring awareness to this cause, but will also open a door on how you can help. Dancy Muller joins us now in Faith and Friends to tell us about Marlene Carson in Rahab's Hideaway. Well, I am so pleased to welcome Pastors Charlene and Darnell Williams who are joining us from New Life Church International. You have uh, an important speaker coming up that, it, that will address a topic that seems to be more in the spotlight and in the news right now, but still so many of us want to pretend it's not a problem locally. So um, Pastor Charlene, will you tell us um, what we can expect on January 12th? 
Thank you. Thank you for having me sure. and my husband here. Um, I am having a speaker, Marlene Carson. She's from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we will be addressing the issue of human trafficking, mm -hmm. uh, an issue that, like you said, many times we want to ignore, we want to pretend like it's not happening, um, not even in our city, but the truth of the matter is it is here, it is happening. And so we decided to bring Marlene uh, to be a speaker. And she herself has been the victim. Yes, ma'am. She has been a prostitute for 10 years in the whole human trafficking arena. So she has really been firsthand in feeling the emotional trauma, the abandonment, the hurts that come with this issue. Mm -hmm. And so she's going to be the one that is able to speak to it. I've heard Marlene speak, and it brings you to tears mm -hmm. to see what young women are experiencing today right in our backyard. Pastor Darnell is, is um, the head of a, a church locally. When you have um, some of your congregants who come to you and, and have such deep hurts mm. like this, and the betrayal, mm -hmm. and, and the shame mm -hmm. that probably comes from yes. um, sexual violence, how do you counsel them? Mm -hmm. How can you possibly lead them back mm -hmm. sure. to their walk with Christ? That's a great question. Um, because there's so much that's involved with that mm -hmm. in terms of the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment, oh, yeah. the fear, mm -hmm. uh, even punishment legally. And so the church has to be a place where we welcome, where we become a point of refuge for people. I think we have to also address the fact that there's a place for spiritual counseling yeah. and then there's a place for professional counseling. Okay. And yeah. so we really have to help people heal their mind and their hearts and their emotions and then you have to get them prepared to re-enter life again. Right. So there has to be some type of skill training and development. And that's one thing that we were impressed with Marlene Carson is yeah. that she brings that dynamic of saying, we, once you get rescued out of human trafficking and sex trade industry, what are you gonna do? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do now? And so her ministry really targets that second half of the question, yeah. Yeah. not just bringing them out, but what happens after that. Right. Yeah. And Pastor Charlene, um, Marlene has a, a haven yes, that yes. she has founded. Is this yes. in Columbus? Yes, it's in Columbus, Ohio, and it's called Rehab Hideaway. And it is that like, almost like a transitional home that she really takes the young ladies and work with them and help them to get reacclimated to society, um, getting them back in school and teaching them life skills and building up their hope emotionally and otherwise. And then um, having Christ, of course, be the center of it all to bring them back to the place where they once were or maybe would have liked to be. Right. Uh, it's starting so young too. It's oh, starting know. at 10 years old now. I so know. these kids don't have even life skills. And sometimes their parents you know? introduce them to this world yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, Marlene will be speaking on Sunday, January 12th at 10.15 in the morning yes. at your church, yes. New Life Church International. Anyone welcome? Everyone. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. We would love anyone in our city that um, can speak to this or have some kind of interest in this to be a part of it and to see how we can step out and help our community. Very good. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much for bringing this issue to the forefront and bringing Marlene to our community as well. Thank you Thank for you. having us. God bless. Back to you. Well, here at TV44, we are blessed with the largest television studio in the region, and we love to see how God is using the space to reach others in creative ways. Possibly you saw the recent comedy special featuring Christian comedian Will McDaniel, which was originally recorded right here in the TV44 studios. Another program recorded here, Update with Bill Harris, seen weekly on TV44, as well as on other stations in Ohio and the southern Indiana region. Now, if you haven't had a chance to watch Update, we encourage you to do so. Bill Harris focuses on relevant topics and challenges you to think deeply. Coming up this week, Bill talks about our common idea of self-sufficiency and how we can get caught up directing ourselves, relying on ourselves and not listening to the spirit in God's direction. We often, whether verbally or non-verbally, tell God, I've got this. Well, thank you guys. On top of being a registered financial consultant and a two-time Emmy award-winning producer, 
Bill Harris ministers through his weekly television program, Update with Bill Harris, that you can find right here on WTLW. We are privileged to have Bill join us now. Bill, thank you so much for being with us today. Happy to be with you, Zach. Bill, we're going to talk a little bit about an upcoming subject and topic that you're going to approach on your uh, upcoming show this mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, Update. Yes, and that subject is called Walking in the Spirit. And I think that is so very important because when we don't understand that this is one of God's requirements for living the Christian life, we tend to walk in the flesh. And the definition of that basically is stemming from the fact that God created you spirit, soul, and body. And each of those three components of you will want to do its own thing and go its own way in life when mm -hmm. it is not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes and directs our spirit, and remember it's spirit that connects with spirit, that influence spills over to the soul, which is the, uh, the mind, the, w the will and the emotions, and from there on to the body, to make the body behave. And that's how <laughs> God wants to guide us through life. Absolutely. And so how do we approach those three areas to guard them and to properly get in the habits to grow them and listen to God's Spirit? Good question. Spending time with the Lord, Zach. I, suffice it to say, many of us Christians, we get up and we start our day without spending time with the Lord. You know, it's almost like uh, th th we need gas for the car. And some of us are running around on empty because we don't take time to refill sure. ourselves yeah. with that. And there's a three, very quickly, just a three-pronged way to do this. For the body, the Lord tells us in Romans uh, chapter, uh, I think 12, verse 1, that we are to lay our bodies on the altar of sacrifice. And therefore, we're, we are killing off, we're mortifying, the Bible says, those desires of the flesh that are contrary mm -hmm. to God's will. Secondly, not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And in reading the Word of God and meditating meditating on it, beginning to think the way God thinks rather than the way our bodies and our souls want us to think. And then thirdly, to walk in the Spirit, that is our spirit becoming subject to the Spirit of God and being led by Him. Sure. And so what recommendations do you have? I know that many of our viewers, we are in the middle of the hustle and bustle of a busy life. Yes. Maybe there are children yes. at home. Maybe it's work that keep us so busy. Do you have any recommendations to those individuals how they can maybe take these baby steps to develop this relationship? Yeah. I think a baby step might be getting up five minutes early <laughs> in the morning and spending that time with the Lord if you're a morning person. Another baby step is if you are a night person instead, a lot of people are night owls, sure. uh, take five minutes later to spend that time with the Lord and then expanding it over time. But when you can spend time in God's presence and you have to, Zach, get away from the noise on the outside, then you have to ask God to help you to deal with the noise on the inside because there's a lot of turmoil going on the inside and God will help to quiet us with that so that we can hear from him and begin to receive his influence and direction. Absolutely. And so when we start to do that, I know that we've talked a lot about around here getting away from the devices or the computers. Maybe it's the <laughs> cell phone that's keeping yes. you so busy. Yes. It's difficult in, in this world it um, to take that and get that quiet time that quite honestly, I think often we don't realize we're missing mm -hmm. that quiet time mm -hmm. until we really get away from it all. That's right. And, and, and suffice it to say, what happens is that here we are, the Lord is trying to help us. Let, let's use the analogy of steering a car down the road. You're going to your sure. destination okay. in life. And the Lord wants to take the steering wheel and take control for you. But, you know, we fight because we want control. And so here we are fighting with the Lord. And then when we have an accident, we expect the Lord to give us a full explanation of what went wrong. <laughs> True. <laughs> he wanted to be in control all along. And then he has, he has to back off and let you have it when you won't give over to him. Absolutely. And so you talk a little bit about in your show the self-sufficiency of that. Yes. Thinking that we can do it on our own um, and then really blaming God when, it's, when yeah. we find out we can't, quite <laughs> honestly. Is there an element of, let's say, pride that plays into that as well? Um, most, too often. Most definitely. And pride is like the beginning point of all sin because we, in our self-sufficiency, you know, we tend to tell God, I can handle this, God. Yes. I, I've got it. Yeah. I've got this. Whether we say it verbally or just, uh, just, show it just showing actions, it, that's yeah. what we're doing. And uh, be, because we are made to be uh, independent people, independent thinking people, and we have uh, the option to do things on our own or with the Lord, we tend to take off in that direction. To surrender that authority to God, it, it can be sometimes difficult because now we're losing control, so to speak. Sure, yeah. But, you know, actually, when you turn over the control, the control to somebody else, you're still in control because you're the one that's turning over that control. So you're, you're still in control. If, if I could say that, just to encourage somebody to, to give it over to the Lord. And he always has a better way mm -hmm. than what we've chosen. Sense, knowledge, human intellect, and logic and the like tell us one thing. But if we'll be still long enough, and listen to God daily, 
He'll give us his path. He'll give us the direction. And we'll sense as we're going through our day, the Lord's saying, yeah, this way, ah, 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 ah. not that way, this way. <laughs> we'll sense that and we'll know how to be successful. And you had mentioned just prior to this segment, we were talking about the voice um, of God. And once we take that time to spend with him, maybe spend just a few minutes here and there uh, reading in the word or spending time in the word, that we can start to sense that voice a little more and more throughout the yes. day, that it's, it's easier to hear, yeah. perhaps. The, the more I get to know you, Zach, the more I get to recognize your voice. And, and soon I can, you can be in a crowd full of people and I can pick out your voice mm. because I've heard it enough. Same way with the Lord. And it, that, that means we're establishing the kind of relationship whereby I'm tuned into his voice all the time. Absolutely. Well, Bill, we thank you so much uh, for being with us today. You can catch an uh, update with Bill Harris in this topic. If you're interested in hearing more on this topic, it'll be this Sunday at 1.30 that he'll be speaking on the topic of walking in the spirit and not the flesh. We are so grateful to have him here and encourage you to watch Update with Bill Harris on Sunday. Guys. Thank you, Zach. And you can catch Update with Bill Harris right here on TV 44 Thursdays at 9 and Sundays at 1.30. Well, now let's revisit our verse for the day, Mark. Let's take a look at Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Certainly a good passage to keep in mind as we enter into the new year. Andy? Certainly is. Thank you, Mark. Coming up next week on Faith and Friends, the 2013 John Reed Leadership Award winner. Very special interview we'll pass along to you then, plus a whole lot more. It's going to be a great show for the first full week of the new year, 2014. 2014, my goodness. Big things ahead. <laughs> if you can get past your, your first week and you get past your, your resolution. Exactly. How, what do you think he should be resolve? I think people should write more, in and do pie. new resolves. Eat more vegetables. Him. I eat fruit. Fruit's not a vegetable. That's why I said vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Beans are okay. Well, we don't have time to talk about <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. It is time for us to go. We certainly have enjoyed being with you. Check out this and so much more at our website, WTLW.com. You can revisit everything you've just seen, all kinds of other things as well. Have a great, great, great day, everyone.